Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. Often when we're out taking pictures, some of them will come out a stop or two overexposed, while others will come out a stop or two underexposed. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate what I do to deal with either situation. I'm doing this demonstration in Lightroom, but what I'm going to be showing you is applicable to any post-processing software you happen to use. Now, this specific image I estimate to be around a stop overexposed. It was shot with a Nikon Z7 II, and in the top left-hand corner, you could see the exposure info. Now, whenever I have an image that is a stop or two, or maybe even a little more overexposed, is I'll immediately go to Highlights and Shadows. I'll take Highlights all the way down and Shadows all the way up. When I do that, I've just flattened the image. I've taken some of the contrast out of the image. Now the image is still overexposed. So then what I'll do is I'll go to the Exposure slider and I'll take Exposure down and I'll just eyeball it until I think the exposure looks correct. Once I do that, I'll just process it like I normally would. So highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up, adjust the exposure slider till it looks like it's properly exposed. Then I just process like I normally would. And normally in Lightroom on a Mac, I would get a white and black point by holding in the option key. If you have a PC, you'd hold in the Alt key, click on the white slider to get that white point, move it to the right till you see colors coming through and then back it off till the colors are just about gone. Similarly, I'll do that for blacks. So I'll hold that option key in, click on the black slider, move it to left. I like to clip the, clip the blacks a bit more. So I'll do that until it looks proper. Then again, I'm just processing as I normally would from this point. So I'm just adding texture clarity, maybe a little vibrance. And there, this image now doesn't look like it started out a bit overexposed. There's before and there's after. Now, similarly, if I have an image that is a bit underexposed, this was shot with the Sony a7R4. You can see the exposure info in the top left-hand corner. And I would say that this is um, maybe a stop and a half, almost two stops underexposed. I'll do the same thing. I'll take highlights all the way down, shadows all the way up. It's flatter now, but it's still underexposed. So I'll go to the exposure slider, and then instead of moving it down, I'm going to move it up, right? Because it's underexposed. I'll just eyeball it till it seems to look like it's properly exposed. Then I process as I normally would from this point forward. I'll get a white and black point. And a black point. And then I'll do texture, clarity, maybe add a little vibrance. In this case, it looks like the buildings are falling backwards. So I'll go to the transform tool and straighten out those buildings. And, you know, to continue my processing, I would probably crop out some of this construction over here on the far left. So it minimized that a bit, but I'll stop here for now. You get the idea. There's before and there's after. Looking at the after, you would never really know that it came out of the camera a stop and a half or so underexposed. It looks fine. So that's what I do when I deal with images that uh, stop, two stops, maybe even three stops over or underexposed. And it works every single time. Thank you, everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.